Hi, I'm Ben Polly, and today I'm going to be helping to interview my fellow interns to the Blue Marble Space Institute of Science's Young Scientist Program 2023 on a pretty unique project, Model Mars. Can everyone share their names? I'm Kai Young. I'm Amy Welch. Hi, my name is Deveshwari Masudya. All right. So tell me, what exactly is Model Mars? Uh, absolutely. Model Mars project at the Blue Marble Space Institute of Science is truly fascinating. It's all about envisioning, envisioning and creating a virtual representation of what life could be like on Mars. Drawing upon our current scientific knowledge by simulating the challenges, opportunities, and dynamics of living on the red planet. This project not only sparks our imagination, but also helps us prepare for the potential realities of inter uh, interplanetary exploration. Today, we are excited to dwell deeper into more insight. Modern Mars is an innovative and immersive project that basically engages young minds in captivating journey of envisioning life on Mars. This initiative is centered around providing youth between like age 12 to 18 with an extraordinary experience to stimulate existence on Martian landscape as a member of a diverse team. Essentially, youth will role play over a period of time, maybe around two months, being part of a Martian community and working as a team to build their community and address challenges. For example, one of the main challenges we have for the upcoming run through of the project is going to be a water challenge. And participants not only have the freedom to imagine many potential ways of structuring a community on Mars, down to what they eat every day and what clothes they wear, because all of this has to be considered when we live in space, but they also have the freedom to imagine a future that isn't restricted by the laws and limitations of Earth as it exists, but to build off of it and create something from more of a blank slate. So what I'm curious about is what unique perspective looking at space grants to our problems on Earth. A lot of people would argue that we have to start investing and addressing issues on Earth before we even begin to tackle space exploration. Do you all think that space exploration and astronomical science are separate from what we should be tackling on Earth? Well, uh, what I think is that the challenges we face on space often push us to develop new technologies and innovative solutions. This advancement initially are intended for space exploration, but can often have practical application that can benefit life on Earth. Very simple examples is the treadmill that we use in gym on everyday life. So basically, it was basically brought up to make sure that the astronaut that lives in the International Space Station, they live it, and then we are using them on Earth. So basically, I would say that space exploration and addressing Earth issue are not mutually exclusive, but they can coexist and even enhance one another. By for, uh, fostering scientific curiosity, technological advancement, and global collaboration, space exploration can actually contribute to a brighter future for both of us. The problems we face on Earth won't magically go away in space, but space exploration can be a sandbox for addressing some of our problems. Mala Mars emphasizes that Mars is not a planet B, but a red sandbox. Well, I've felt for a long time that the greatest practical utility of any space science is ultimately to find out more about life on Earth and how to live here better. We look out into the cosmos and we end up learning more about our place in the universe and how to live and work on Earth better. A considerable amount of technological advancements we take for granted today came from practical considerations for living in space, as Dia mentioned before. This includes such uh, mundane things as home insulation and Velcro, challenging students across the world to make realistic and practical decisions about living on Mars and how they and see how they overcome significant challenges would inspire creativity in solving pressing issues. Yeah. Thank you. I also wanted to address something that I think you all recognize as being very important to bring up in science, which is the ethics of space exploration and our perspective as Western scientists working in the U.S. I know that addressing contemporary colonial mentalities is something that's difficult and important to do. It's definitely played a role in this project. And what did that look like for you all? 
It's true that as scientists working in the U.S., we inherit the legacy of colonialism and often end up perpetrating it. We have attempted to mitigate this partially by avoiding colonialist language in our discussions of Martian communities. We also encourage model Martians to discuss not just the technological and economic circumstances of future societies, but also the cultural circumstances, which hopefully include non-Western cultures. For example, in the template explaining water resources, we ask model Martians to consider the cultural role that water will play on Mars and give as an example the role that water plays in several world religions. That said, there is no way that we alone can address colonial mentalities that exist in science. So our goal is not to perpetuate the way things have worked historically on Earth and just extend it to Mars. As Amy said, we do not envision this game as simulating a colonization project. We want to bring in different perspectives on space travel and habitation from all over the world and ask them to imagine Mars as a place of great cultural and historic significance, while also being a play space where their imagination can run wild. We want to emphasize that this project and its gameplay are not about the expansion to Mars or about creating an outpost or a lifeboat for the Earth. Other than those guidelines to avoid historical issues and biases, we want the vision for what Mars can or will be to be made collaboratively by the participants. Yeah, totally. And there are so many, like you said, about expansion. There are so many stories and about Mars where we talk about expansion and what I was interested in going into this project was the way that fiction and role play, especially sci-fi, works to investigate the future, like obviously inspired by problems today. Uh, I know that there are a lot of us here into sci-fi and personally over the course of this summer, I was reading a lot of sci-fi works where I went these questions around AI and how we raise the next generation and what technology is allowed to be so cool to include in a role-playing game. And there are so many topics that would be so cool to tackle. I know it was a challenge synthesizing all of that into this game that young students only play for a brief period of time. So um, there are so many potential things to address. There are infinite possibilities for ways that humanity could develop in the future. And I wanted to ask you all what you felt about our work as scientists synthesizing for, for the science internship, all of that into something that is accessible for young scientists. I did read and watch some sci-fi this summer and considered incorporating it into the resources I compiled for the templates, but in the end, I stuck mostly to the real world and allowing them all Martians to imagine in the future. Although I mentioned one sci-fi novel that I read back in April in the water resources. So for me, the sci-fi angle was tricky because we've been really working on defining what is Model Mars as a project. I can count at least three meetings when the replicators from Star Trek came up as a comparison to what we were drafting or creating, but we were never quite sure what to do about that comparison. One place where this came up consistently was in the decision for when to set our whole world building project. It was this push and pull between wanting a near future, realism focused model Mars or a far future, highly speculative model Mars. So what was kind of settled on was somewhere in between. We're still ironing out exactly when the game will be set, but the core of the focus is going to be on tying all of the themes of the game back to real world issues that are being dealt with in the present. And, you know, for some of my personal gameplay contributions, I was heavily inspired by the sci-fi video game Sid Meier's Civilization Beyond Earth because all of it features themes of social change, resource management, technological advancement in an alien setting. And so more than that, can we all talk about the importance of this project being interdisciplinary and incorporating more than just the standard STEM subjects into the learning process? Well, uh, when we talk about the, this project being interdisciplinary, I would say that without a doubt, the interdisciplinary component of the project is crucial. STEM is important, but at the same time, we must not forget that our endeavor involves much more than just calculations and tests. It is about ethics, society, culture, aspects that cannot be just disregarded. Through my personal journey, I have 
discovered that multidisciplinary learning has broadened my perspective. I have been exploring topics that otherwise I would not have done so. And it's been really interesting and enriching. I feel like I have been receiving well more round, rounded uh, education, whether I'm studying the background of space exploration or taking into account the psychological effect uh, of have residing on Mars. But just by combining several fields, we are actually attacking the problem from all sides. It encourages teamwork and provides viewpoint, like fresh viewpoints. And that is really good with the having interdisciplinary approach, as it also makes sure that our ideas are well-rounded. It has personally enlarged my perspective and increased my the accessibility of our work to a larger audience. Although STEM is important, it is not the only factor that influences the future. We ask model Martians to consider the future through a steep framework that is social, technical, technological, economic, environmental, and political, because that is a realistic view of the drivers of change that make up the future. What do you think the game format adds to the educational experience that is different from what you get from course curriculum? I am personally, I'm all for using games as a medium for education, and I think uh, what a lot of other apps or educational games get wrong is that they're so focused on a traditional delivery of an experience that they miss all of the, the imaginative and creative um, ideas that you can get from having people really immersed in a fun but fictional experience. And I've read a lot of papers on attempts to create like educational video games, and a lot of them think that their strong point is the realism that they introduce. I actually think that um, the advantageous part of a game and why our project of Model Mars is so strong is because it's transporting players into a space that's not our current reality. We're nowhere near creating multiple human communities on Mars right now, but the players get to imagine this world and, and create, and it allows a lot of brainstorming and ideation that's very promising to see in what could be the next generation scientists. And that's what sci-fi is about too, imagination and playing with the edge of realistic ideas and using that to circle back to our current reality. Well, I think having Model Mars structured as a game will have lots of interesting potential for participant growth and development with time. We envision Model Mars as something kids will be able to return to year after year and approach the challenges in new and interesting ways without a grade or a score telling them that their answer was objectively wrong or right. It is based in not only thinking, but trying new things and exploring new options. I agree with both of you. Yes, uh, the game style of learning actually adds a whole new dimension uh, to the learning part. It involves more than simply recalling the information, but it also involves active engagement, problem solving, and critical thinking. The exercise simulates real world situation, which actually makes learning more fun and useful. Gamification, I think, encourages innovation, teamwork, and healthy competition. Additionally, the interactive aspect keeps us interested in uh, learning more, and it's always inspiring. It's an engaging method to take a complex idea and put them in a use uh, in a much more enjoyable way. Okay, that's cool. So on more of the scientific side, I'm curious what kinds of research you all found yourself doing for this project and how is it similar or different from research projects that you've done in the past? I did research to find resources about living on other planets, futures thinking, systems thinking, design thinking, and the importance of water. It was interdisciplinary research, which is something I have done before and yet it was different than any of my past research projects. I had kind of a similar experience in this project in contrast to any previous project that I have worked on. It calls for a lot of combination of current knowledge and imaginative thinking. As we were creating a new narrative that draws from multiple fields, not only summarizing the already published facts and resources, combining the research with the aspect of storytelling was the most exciting part. 
or any surprising or unexpected results from your work? Did you find new or alternative ways of approaching your portion of the project while working? Yes, actually. Well, so at the beginning of the project, we were handed this huge list of materials that the founders of Model Mars had created for their quote unquote alpha prototype. And this included what they had written about on the list of Mars communities they developed for the first groups to play with. It started out as this short bullet pointed list that they attributed different qualities that they thought were important to each of the communities. But I thought that a more detailed description with a bit of backstory included would be a better alternative. And so I spent a lot of time writing up my description, tagging with lots of notes and comments about asking the founders about different restrictions they want to put on the world building aspects of the game. And then I shared it with my group mates. So they all had pretty different interpretations and thought just a more detailed bullet pointed list would be the best. And after a series of long discussions between uh, the members of the founding team and the other interns, we landed on a new approach, what we sort of call modular descriptions. We would have a list of community guideline questions that act as a description and as description headings rather. And then the community descriptions would basically be us filling out the answers with all of the details. So this would ensure that all communities had the same pieces of information covered the descriptions would be easily searchable and comparable, and then they could also be as detailed as we wanted them to be. To add on to Ben's answer, I found myself thinking a lot about the project and just everyday life and the way I learn things or exercise creativity. Like, where do I appreciate long descriptions and where do I appreciate short summaries and where do I want a lot of hand holding and guidance compared to where I want the freedom to create what I want with without a lot of rules? And at its core, these types of learning questions all that we all had to address when we were creating a lot of the resources for Model Mars um, are at the center of science communication and what it means to make science accessible, especially for an audience of young scientists who will use Model Mars as a platform to find their voice and use their creativity. And that makes me, as a scientist who's just at the beginning of my career, very excited. And we'd like to thank Blue Marble Space Institute of Science, YSP, and the Model Mars founders for having us on this exciting project. Thank, thank you. Thank you.